Mark, go ahead, dive into this big contract for Brandon Lau. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I definitely will remember how to pronounce his name now because it's always going to be in my head as Lau as in wow because I wouldn't have pegged him to get a $24 million deal coming into camp and, and you know, potential to be over $40 million with all the options and things like that. But it's obviously a guy that Rays are really heavy to bet on. This is how surprised I am. I remember asking Kevin Cash a few weeks ago, was Brandon Lau going to make the team or not? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's going to make the team. He's going to play quite a bit. He's going to play a little bit of first, a little bit of second, a little bit in the outfield. He could DH a little bit. But for the Rays to make this type of commitment, I mean, they obviously believe in him as a player, and they obviously believe in him as a person because that's always a factor with these kind of deals. We haven't seen them make too many recently with the younger guys, Kiermaier, a couple of years ago, and he's a little bit more established. So it's really an interesting move, and maybe it's the first step in trying to keep this whole core together. It just shows that I didn't realize a couple of weeks ago how much they thought of Brandon Lau. You know, because I wasn't really sure how he'd fit in, where the playing time would come from. But it's clear this is something that they've been talking about with him since the winter and, and certainly through the whole spring training. So I think my surprise is not realizing, some of it, my own self, of not realizing how much they thought of him because he's a guy they obviously see as a major piece going forward. You know, he's signed for six more years now. So we'll have to make sure we all get his name right especially you broadcasters. <laughs> wow, as in wow. Where do you see him fitting in? Because as we previously said, he's one of those flexible players. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. G-Man Choi's defense at first base has been one of the stories of spring training this year. And I think maybe the Rays didn't even anticipate him playing so well. So maybe the idea was moving Brandon Lau there, thinking he'd get most of his time. But G-Man has played well enough that you could see Brandon Lau at second now sometimes. And when they're facing a righty, maybe Joey Wendell slides over short, gives Adamas a break, or slides over to third and gives Duffy a break. And they can use all three lefties in the infield, use the DH spot to rotate it around a little bit. But I think Brandon Lau will play against every right-handed hitter there is, and obviously against some lefties, but they've got to rotate that.
Three, two, one. Mark, go ahead, dive into this big contract for Brandon Lau. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I definitely will remember how to pronounce his name now because it's always going to be in my head as Lau as in wow because I wouldn't have pegged him to get a $24 million deal coming into camp and, and the you know, potential to be over $40 million with all the options and things like that. But it's obviously a guy that Rays are really heavy to bet on. This is how surprised I am. I remember asking Kevin Cash a few weeks ago, was Brandon Lau going to make the team or not? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's going to make the team. He's going to play quite a bit. He's going to play a little bit of first, a little bit at second, a little bit in the outfield. He could DH a little bit. But for the Rays to make this type of commitment, I mean, they obviously believe in him as a player, and they obviously believe in him as a person because that's always a factor with these kind of deals. We haven't seen them make too many recently with the younger guys, Kiermaier, a couple of years ago, and he's a little bit more established. So it's really an interesting move, and maybe it's the first step in trying to keep this whole core together. You say you were surprised, or you say you kind of questioned it a couple of weeks ago. Knowing what you know today, yesterday, would you have questioned the deal still? Well, obviously it just shows that I didn't realize a couple weeks ago how much they thought of Brandon Lau. You know, because I wasn't really sure how he'd fit in, where the playing time would come from. But it's clear this is something that they've been talking about with him since the winter and, and certainly through the whole spring training. So I think my surprise is not realizing, some of it, my own self, of not realizing how much they thought of him because... He's a guy they obviously see as a major piece going forward. You know, he's signed for six more years now. So we'll have to make sure we all get his name right, especially you broadcasters. <laughs> Lau, as in wow, where do you see him fitting in? Because as we previously said, he's one of those flexible players. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. G-Man Choi's defense at first base has been one of the stories of spring training this year. And I think maybe the Rays didn't even anticipate him playing so well. So maybe the idea was moving Brandon Lau there, thinking he'd get most of his time. But G-Man has played well enough. You can see Brandon Lau at second now sometimes, and when they're facing a righty, maybe Joey Wendell slides over short, gives Adamas a break, or slides over to third and gives Duffy a break, and they can use all three lefties in the infield, use the DH spot to rotate it around a little bit. But I think Brandon Lau will play against every right-handed hitter there is, and obviously against some lefties, but they've got to rotate that. Perfect. Anything else, Peggy? T, he can play second base. He played the outfield last year. He can play left. He can play right. He's been working at first base this spring. So both those guys, I think you're going to see them probably get starts at a bunch of positions. I mean, Joey Wendell got starts at five positions last year, too. So, you know, he can move around. Um, Brandon Lau can move around. Daniel Robertson can move around. I mean, Willie Adamas, for the most part, will stay where he is. And even Matt Duffy, before the hamstring injury, their plan this spring was to get him in the outfield. They wanted him to move around a little bit, too. Crazy. It really is crazy that they have so much flexibility there. Now, of course, a player with a little bit more experience, and you can't forget him, Kevin Kiermeyer. If he can stay healthy this season, will he be able to push this team to another level? Yeah, I mean, I think there's no doubt, just, and you watch these guys play all the time, too. I mean, there's no doubt that when he's on the field, they're a better team because he does so much defensively. In fact, we saw a play the other day down here in Port Charlotte where he went for a ball and so did Austin Meadows, and they ended up having a little bit of a collision. And I truly think it was just because Austin Meadows didn't realize how much ground Kevin Kiermaier really covers because it was kind of a 50-50 ball, and there was no doubt Kiermaier was going to catch it. So he makes them so much better defensively. Now, he offensively has to get out of his own head a little bit, and I think he admits that all the time. He says he has to try not to do too much. A less is more approach works better for him. You don't get in love with your power. So he says all the right things about that, and, you know, the speed is always going to be part of his game. And, you know, you think he's learned bunt once in a while, slap the ball the other way once in a while. All those little things that can help him get on base, build his stats, help the team more, because when he's on base, he's also a game changer. We see him go from first to third. We see him you know, kind of take those hustle doubles we talk about when he bloops the ball in. So there's all these ways he can gain an extra base for the Rays, and he has to be on there to do it. Finally for you, Mark, 90 and 72. That was the final record last season. Was it a fluke, or can this team get to 90 wins or even surpass that this year? I'm going to say both, which is probably not the answer you were expecting, Gabby, but I, I think 90 wins was a little bit of a fluke last year, only in the sense that, you know, we talked about it. they were in such a big hole at the start of the year, but they got such a great level of confidence toward the end. They had all these young players. Things went so well. So a fluke in the sense that it wasn't expected from anywhere, and I think even within the clubhouse probably to a degree until they kind of all bought in as they were from. Think of all the guys they got rid of, not only at the start of the season, but even during the year. Wilson Ramos, Chris Archer, you know, they made those trades too, Nate Evaldi. So they kept getting rid of guys, they kept playing better, so all that really worked for them. This year, you know, 90 is going to be the target. Everyone kind of hangs on them. You may not have to win 90 to get in the playoffs. You may be able to win 87. I think that's ultimately their goal is, you know, whether it's finishing ahead of Boston and New York or at least finishing third and finishing ahead of, you know, Rocco and the Minnesota Twins, 
finishing ahead of Oakland, the other teams, I mean, that's really where their competition is. He has to get into the tournament. Now, winning the division, sure, that's going to be great. Finishing as the top wild card, you get to play that game at home. But I think for them, the goal this year is to get into the playoffs, and I think they've got you know, the experience to a degree. They've got the youth on their side. They've made an interesting move by adding Charlie Morton. Now, there's still some question marks, too, and you know, a lot of young guys that did well last year, can they do as well? So that's what's going to make this season so interesting. Perfect. Thank you.